Hello there, welcome back to the Saga Abridged Campaign. In the previous part I tried many things to advance our omnidirectional cause, I was set back a few times, but in the end we did make some progress, I think we took at least one Imperial settlement, and we did defeat the Jozai, one of our Shogunate enemies, and to let you know how well that went, we're starting this episode being attacked by the Jozai, teaming up with the Sendai, after their immediate betrayal of us. We've got two groups coming in from the west and south, and there'll be reinforcements coming from the north. In the south, they've got a whole bunch of melee troops, and we're going to be trying to hold them off with our Royal Marines. We don't have many troops here, but remember those guys have a super low reload time, so we're going to be machine gunning the enemy down as they charge on in. Here comes that reinforcement army from the Sendai. We also have a reinforcement army of our own, not in a particularly useful position, so we need to be careful that they don't just get taken out by the Sendai or something. Now the western attack is mainly line infantry, and annoyingly they're doing the thing I've mentioned before in this series that's actually an okay strategy, just line up and shoot the wall, because they have so many troops they may be able to shoot us all off the wall and then attack for free. However, they've also formed up with a very deep formation, meaning the vast majority of their guns aren't being used, and if you think about the, the length of the firing lines on both sides there, it's actually going to be about equal. Therefore, it's not really a disadvantageous gunfight at all. Meanwhile, the Marines have successfully cut down most of the first unit of Spear Levy coming in. Upon close inspection, you can see a lot of the delay between the volleys here isn't actually the reloading. It's that there's a kind of jankiness in the shooting. The guys have to really slowly turn to face their target and go through the firing animation. So, it could be a bit better, but still it's going to be better than line infantry. And once Spear Levy do get inside, Royal Marines are also a pretty good melee unit, so we can hold them with that as well. Obviously, the enemy's morale won't last all that long there either. Looks like the Sendai are sending some Cav to go and support the southern attack, as are the Jozai sending a few melee units to go and back up that attack as well. Probably not the best idea because they're getting shot on the way around. The gunfight over there in the west is just going to continue. I'm fine for that to carry on because we should actually come out on top if our cover is working for us. This is where the fight is right now. They are swarming us with melee infantry and sharpshooters being sent into the melee as well. A very bad idea. Using the sharpshooters to kill our Royal Marines would have been a great strategy for the enemy, but they have not noticed that. And as the grind goes on, we find that we're losing very few Marines. The Marines got something like a thousand kills as the enemy came in. This caused them to level up like six times, so their melee stats have been hyper buffed and they were already pretty high. The enemy just can't bring them down. <laughs> Looks like that Cav Division, Cav Company, decided not to charge into my Spear Levy who I sent outside the castle to just sort of sit there and look threatening. Good move from the AI, but broadly speaking their attack in the south has now failed. Their western attack is failing because they decided to stop shooting and have some guys simply walk towards the wall really slowly. They're going to get shot to pieces, so good move. Now the Sendai's main bulk force of infantry is starting to arrive. So far, not making any serious attacks. My reinforcements are having a bad day because the enemy used their naval support fire on them. I was really happy with this because if they'd used that support fire on the castle, it's so powerful at destroying the walls, which of course does the weird thing where your troops get launched into space, we could have taken enormous losses. Instead, they just killed some of our much less important reinforcement infantry. And they are still actually coming in useful because we're grappling with some enemy cav that was left behind. We'll be able to take out their commanders over there. And we can see that the Sendai are using a portion of their force to actually go around apparently towards the southern front again, missing a chance there to go through that open door by the looks of things. So that's ideal, they're just going to get shot as they move, but another portion of their force is doing the good strategy. They're doing the thing that I found on this map before, where you can stand on the hill and shoot over the top of the wall, inflicting big damage on everything that's standing around. And, well, they're doing just that. We're losing troops fast. I think I eventually just got out of there with the vast majority of their troops. They've successfully driven me away. That's a good strategy, and this is a bad strategy. So, one optimal play, one suboptimal play from the Sendai. We're going to kill at least half of their army pretty much for free, and that's obviously going to help us out quite a lot. 
spotted their revolver cav trying to be cool, dual wielding their revolvers and shooting them at the wall, but they're at a very big disadvantage in this fight and they die within a few seconds by the looks of things. Nasty stuff. My reinforcements encounter a few of the Sendai units. So it's time for a melee fight right there with our run-in fighting the enemy's levies and we're shooting in there with arrows. This is some old school action. But it is going to be backed up by the fact that behind all this we do have rows of guns who can somewhat see what's going on, not enough to really shoot a few of them are shooting occasionally. One thing I noted here is that the archers really don't shoot very fast. I figured their upside was that they didn't have to reload very much. But no, they do sit there considering to shoot for a long time. I do think this mod actually makes archers worse in order to emphasize the modern units, since they never seem to perform very well. Anyway, the battle is now all coming down to this big blob that's walking around. Looks like they've got a general trying to revolve our guys on the wall. That's not going to happen. And the blob proved to be a pretty vulnerable target. Obviously, if anything shoots at the blob, it's almost guaranteed to hit something, so our low accuracy units are going to be very effective. And the wall cannons are effective because they're so grouped together that while those shots aren't very powerful, they do kill several guys as the shot passes through the blob each time, grabbing us a few extra kills, and then at some point this blob just routes, unable to make the assault it was apparently setting up for. Then they get blasted even more by the wall cannons. I think they're more powerful than they look because a lot of the guys that get knocked down just get back up again, but it gets a few kills sometimes. I played on through the route phase in this battle to try and get a good result and kill their general who was still alive. The replay actually crashed, but here's where we ended up. Their army's in very bad condition. Our army's in very good condition. That actually went easier than I thought it was going to, mainly because the AI screwed it up. After that then, we need to do something about the Jozai in general since they have just betrayed us. One thing I was willing to do is offer a peace treaty again. A bit naive, I was like, hey, do you want to be my vassal anyway, despite the betrayal? No, they don't, so we're going to have to do something, and the army we have there at Chimasa will be the ones who have to do it. As we move on towards the next turn, the Aizu probably break a peace treaty to declare war on me. I don't remember when we last got our treaty with them. But we immediately see three stacks coming at us, and at Hitachi, a Sendai agent creates a full stack of rebels there as well. Very inconvenient. Here's the Shimusa army going after the Jozai remnants. The annoying thing about this, of course, is we've walked up a mountain to do it. So that's taken us way off course. It's going to take us a couple of turns to get anywhere interesting with those guys. But in theory, they will be going after Hitachi Fields to finish the Jozai off. We've also got some Jozai troops up top with the main force that we need to push out of the way. Can't really engage them this turn. The main force though needs to primarily concern itself with going to the east to do something about those three stacks of Aizu troops. Looks like Shimotsuke is in general trouble. They obviously had those two stacks hidden away in that really isolated Shimosa field settlement off of the road and out of my line of sight. Very sneaky. I've had this army here trying to do something about the two enemy armies near Musashi for a long time. I keep failing to ambush the enemy, they don't take the bait or they keep seeing my army, so at this stage I'm going to start just chasing enemies, because we are going to be chasing them vaguely in the direction of a front line, so it's not too much of a waste to be walking off like that. Now I notice we've almost reached my victory condition, that is to maximize our fame and become the best boy. Because of that, this will be the final episode, as I no doubt put in the title or something, so I just didn't realise it was going to get there this quickly. We've been making a bit more progress than I thought. We do keep taking the odd settlement and advancing our fame. And because we're so close, I thought maybe we can actually get there right now by going after Suruga here. In order to do it, though, we need to pull off some nice cheeky exploits. Normally, you're not allowed to pull troops off a siege in order to go and attack something, which I want to do with the enemy army outside the siege. But you can have another army suck the troops out of the siege and then walk off with them. This doesn't disrupt the siege in any way. So it allows us to do this with most of our troops. We push away the enemy's reinforcements and now we can sneak back in and see what that does to the balance bar. It ended up being good enough, so I decided to order to resolve it, and it wasn't a lying balance bar this time. We got a decent enough result, losing one unit, but that doesn't really matter. And we're in, so not only have we taken somewhere, but we've 
got a little bit more fame. I thought I might see something pop up right here saying I'm now the best boy, but we're not quite there apparently. But yes, our war with the Matsumoto has finally advanced a bit, although we have walked past like two of their stacks to do this, so we're in a very dodgy position with them. Their other army out there that I was chasing with my ambush force accidentally ambushed them after I gave up on ambushing them and just gave a generic attack order. Our guys ended up in hiding by accident and got the ambush. And I'm going to do this one manually because I want to make sure we actually kill this army and can finally be rid of it. It wasn't too much of an ambush battle in reality because we weren't in range to attack them as the fight starts and they quickly just form up into a line. That means it's going to turn into a regular field attack sort of thing, which actually is sort of helpful because it turns the AI into defensive mode where it doesn't really pay too much attention to what's going on, allowing you to attack individual units to kill them and draw them out in a classic Shogun to exploity sort of way and generally utilize greater firepower at all times as we kill the enemy army piece by piece. This is even more effective in Fall of the Samurai than it is in Vanilla Shogun because you can see the shots have a much greater range than the game allows you to fire them at. So when you shoot things that are standing in front of the rest of the army, all the missed shots go past and might hit something else, therefore even the stuff out of range has taken a bunch of casualties to our little uh, sniping down of the units in front of them. Here we are a bit later after we've shuffled around and tempted more enemy units to come forwards and participate in the battle at this stage. Not much the enemy can do because they don't have enough men to attack, but the AI doesn't know about withdrawing, which is strange because some of the earliest Total War games allowed the AI to withdraw when it was at a disadvantage. But not this one, unfortunately. Here I saw a cav charge coming in. I thought they might be going for the sharpshooters so they tried to get them out of the way. I saw that they weren't. Ordered some spears to rush forward to try and stop them in time. But it seems that when I gave them the order to sprint and increase their charge bonus with that ability, this has cancelled the order. So they just didn't do anything and we did get hit by a big cav charge there. Here's a nice use of archers shooting shots over the top of the gun infantry to take out these enemy calf who are just perilously close to our line and die pretty fast. So yes, we go on to win this battle. Despite my claims that I wanted to completely destroy the enemy army, I did just hit end battle in the end, and we didn't get the good end battle treatment some of their troops survived. Inconvenient. Now with the Aizu, they very nicely didn't attack Shimotsuke. They had two stacks there at the castle, and we only had a few units inside, but they decided to try and siege it out. That's a terrible decision. It's going to allow us to move up these reinforcements who annoyingly can't quite get in to relieve the siege this turn. I wanted to get in because this guy has night attack, so I could fight just the first army kill them and then sneak into the castle before the second army knew what was going on and then we'd be safe. Instead we just sit there but we will come back to that in a sec. I finished off the survivors from the ambush so we did get them in the end and this army is now free to sneak up and help out with the Aizu situation. Then though I was going to try and get peace with the Matsumoto after that recent victory but while poking around found instead that the Aizu wanted peace despite only just starting that war with us. And boom, that ends the siege of Shimotsuke, so we got our way in the end. Almost lucky that I wasn't able to attack them because I've saved myself some time there. I could also see here that the Jozai were willing to re-become my vassal. Tempting because then I wouldn't have to deal with them. But I thought, well, since they betrayed us instantly last time, we might as well just forget about it and go kill them. We're probably going to have to do that at some point. Now over with the Matsumoto after they did not get peace with me. I figured let's just go straight towards Kai. This is dangerous because we know they have a couple of armies to the south that could come up and try to strike at all of this territory I've left unguarded. But we're just going to assume that they won't because they haven't so far. They've certainly had some chances. Now here's a move. A very long time in the making. We finally got a fleet back to our starting position to defend our trade port. It quickly pushes away those Kanazawans. And now we just sit around. We can't gain any immediate victory here because we need a massive amount of money to rebuild our commercial port and start trading from it. Until then though, we're going to have a fleet to stop anyone else blockading it or damaging it further. So this is the first step towards actually having some money and putting more troops out, that sort of thing. 
Now the rebellion over at Hitachi comes in to attack. It's just tons of spear levy, and with our castle defenses we can probably kill them because they'll rout before they do much. In this case, I thought maybe we can cheekily auto-resolve this and just barely survive so I don't have to do the battle. But actually it was really good, so my laziness paid off there, we got an extremely good result and killed all of the enemies, so that whole situation is out the window now. Since the Aizu have kindly walked off, now our main force needs to run back west again, because an invasion I've been expecting for a while finally starts happening, the Takeyama are moving a stack that's just been sitting there over to the west. To come towards the field settlement, there you can see I'm setting up a very exploity ambush, that one unit set in ambush is unlikely to achieve anything. However, if you ambush the enemy and then cancel it, it sometimes resets their AI and causes them to walk off in weird directions. So it's a potential way to stop them from attacking me, that's what's behind all that. Now we arrive at Kai, and there's not much there, so we can just go on in and auto resolve right away. We do lose one unit, but at this stage that doesn't matter all that much, I'm just trying to grab a capture to get that fame. And as it happens, the capture of Kai is what pushes it over the edge. We are now officially the Kampaku, the Regent of Japan. We're the number two boy under the Emperor. We're the best. In order to be promoted to Vanguard, though, we do need to go through another turn. And being Vanguard is what I want because I believe it will stop all of the Imperial factions from being mean to me because I become the leader of the Imperial factions. So if we can set that up, then we'll be good to go and I can say the campaign's over because it's a we'll win from here situation. On the way there, the Matsumoto make this suicide attack. That balance bar's a little bit mean, I think. It's not that bad for them, but they do die off. So that's another win against our Imperial allies. Perhaps the last cheeky win to get in before peace falls upon us. The Kanazawa annoyingly going back there to reblockade the port after I moved away to do piracy. So annoying because I think that also adds more damage to the ports every time they reblockade it. Anyway, hacking through everything, we get to the choice, the realm divide of Fall of the Samurai, which is supposed to happen long before you reach the victory conditions. We have the choice of becoming the Imperial Vanguard or going our own way, which is effectively what we've been doing already, but just harder. You can become a Republic and everybody hates you. We might actually be able to do that from this situation, considering how well we've been holding on so far. But it would probably cause someone like the Tosa or the Satsuma to attack us, and then it really would be over because all of our territories elsewhere would start disappearing. Anyway, I expect that could be a fun campaign if I wanted to make another 100 episodes. In this case, I'm ready to go. So we're going to be picking Fight for the Emperor, promoting ourselves to Vanguard, and we'll see what effect that has on the diplomacy. Right off the bat, we start seeing some results. The Fukui, who are at war with us for some reason, decide to end the war, recognizing me as the big daddy of the Imperials now. Now we also grab a peace treaty with Takeyama, and that's going to stop them from invading us, which they were about to do. So great timing on that one. We've now got a funky new flag. We're red instead of orange to represent how cool we are or something with this. The campaign's direction will take a change because we can stop fighting to the left and fight up instead and concentrate our forces on killing the Aizu, then the Sendai, and then the yellow faction at the top who actually has like 20 something regions. There's tons of stuff up there, but they're just being very passive so we haven't seen them at all. Now I didn't get a peace treaty with the Matsumoto, just temporarily, so I could take that field settlement very cheekily and then get the peace treaty because that makes our territory look better. We can also force them to go to war with all of our enemies, so that's nice. And there we go, a long-term bother is out the window, and because of our vanguard magic they shouldn't betray us anymore. With the Jozai, I wanted to go attack them with this army that's ready to go, but I actually can't here because the territory right on the other side of this bridge belongs to the Aizu and we don't have military access, so I'm not allowed to give an order to go off this bridge. Unfortunate there. I moved on to see how things would change during the end turn sequence. We end up at war with the Nagaoka, who actually have territory to the west of the Matsumoto territory we've taken, so that is a little bit of a problem. The Jozai want a peace treaty, and they're willing to become my vassal again. 
we're going to take the deal. I think with that vanguard magic that I mentioned, they won't betray me this time, so we've actually got out of that war just fine. Now we're at war with the Aizu once again, they're declaring war on my vassal for some reason. This reminds me of my Nan Man campaign recently. So that's that, we've got our focus. We do actually need to go one province to the west to kick the Nagoka out, and then we'll go up. However, there's also something going on back in western Honshu. I figured I was bordered back here by my allies. Well, I'm not. There are actually two massive shogunate factions that over the last like 50 turns have gradually killed my allies, and because I was just never looking over there, I didn't notice until the end of the campaign really, so we actually are in a more dangerous situation than I thought, because the rest of our territory is unguarded and is surrounded by shogunate factions, including the shogunal vanguard. So dodgy stuff, here's me getting the Fukui to help out in this situation because they do control a bit of territory in the middle. I thought, how do we even still have the victory conditions if the shogunals have become so powerful? But actually the Fukui are controlling the capital over here and we far exceed the victory conditions in terms of the numbers and I think that's just because the victory conditions are too low or maybe it's because I have it on short victory and they actually are just genuinely supposed to be easy but we have blown the victory conditions away despite actually being in a really perilous situation and not controlling very much of the country at all so I think in reality while I'm saying this is where we would win from things are about to get really dangerous what I'm going to do is run away before I have to play that because it's time to go play other things but you can see here this is the next turn we did re-establish our trade route so we're finally making some money and that will give us a chance to bounce back because we can make a couple of new stacks in the path of those shogunate armies on honshu and just do some defend forever tactics while our main force is up at the front just go and take everything up the right side of the map and eventually come back to finish things off that would take a very long time but i think it would be possible so we're going to call it quits here and just claim that I've won and just get out of here before things go very wrong, which they actually might from this setup. Thanks for watching the Saga Abridged Campaign. Been one that has both been harder than I thought in some ways and easier than I thought in other ways. This mod is kind of glitchy and I don't really recommend it. It does make things different at least. It was very different to a normal campaign, which I guess is what I wanted because I've actually played Fall of the Samurai like more than any of the other Total War games because I used to play it even before having this YouTube channel. Anyway, the next thing I'll be playing is the Thera mod for Medieval 2, something that did well in a recent vote. It's a mod where it takes a whole bunch of different factions from different cultures and time periods, puts them on an original map with a whole bunch of continents in a new world, and then they fight each other. I'm playing as the pirate faction and right off the bat we'll be fighting the Mesoamericans and I'm sure there's going to be some more interesting matchups after that as well. So join me next time to see how that goes. In the meantime, thanks for watching.